the mistakes that folks make all the time, buying animals on the internet, uh, listening to people say, oh, well, he's, he's been there, done that, broke things. You've heard me talk about it, but now you're going to see and hear the, the right thing, uh, the real thing. Uh, Dave and I have been talking about doing a video about uh, uh, fixing the, the, the handler, fixing the person and yeah. not the mule. Well, and that's a great thing because Dave's got a lot of knowledge now about these mules and stuff. We thought about him and I, and we will do some of that in there. But I'm thinking that we're here with James, who's been watching my videos. Him and his family, Dave, actually said and watched it watching TV at night. They flip on some of my, my videos and they watch it at night. You know, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So anyway, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great video. Uh, you're gonna see uh, James has been bucked off. He's been hurt. Uh, and he's also a, a nurse at the VA hospital in Prescott. He's got a, a really lovely family and he really, he's got it in his heart and blood to ride. And, 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 and you're going to hear some things and it's going to amaze you and, and also see how we fix the problem at the same time. Awesome. Very good. Uh, so the next question that I've got is, uh, is it's from Wayne and Wayne sent in asking, he says, I found uh, one of your saddles used. And I wanted wow. to make sure that it would fit my mule before I actually went and purchased it. So, Steve, my question uh, on behalf of Wayne is, will your saddle fit my mule? A lot of times uh, we want to make sure that we get the right dimensions. We get the right size for the mule saddle. Will your saddle, used and all, will it fit my mule? Yes, that's not, that's not going to be a problem. The bars, the, the saddle, how I made it and this sort of thing, uh, and how I rigged it up so that the bars fit the skeletal structure, the skirting fix the, fits the body structure. And that's really important to understand. Also understand, folks, like a lady today, she says, I, I, I want to get one of your saddles, but I'm going to borrow a friend, put it on, see how it fits, and I have to do that. She says, well, what do you mean? I, I want to see how it fits. I said, well, uh, tell me what about saddles. And she just kind of gives a general overview, like a lot of people do. And I said, man, what I want you to do is I want you to watch the saddle fit videos, see how it's done. Because what you just told me was exactly what most people have an understanding of. And you're going to call me and say, gosh, it don't do this and it don't do that. And, and here's one of the things that you're going to do. You're going to put the saddle on. You just told me about it. You're going to see if it rocks. And I'm going to tell you, yeah, it's going to rock. Well, why is that? Because there's a fat pocket right at the sixth or seventh rib, right where the front cinch attaches. And if you take the horn and you take the candle and you rock it back and forth across that fat pocket, it's going to rock. Yes, it is. You know, uh, I watched a guy when I was over in Missouri for the mule show. I watched a guy put the saddle on a straight spot, to see if it would rock. Um, that's no way to fit a saddle, but that's another story. So going on, folks, I, 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 I've got a video that comes with each saddle. But Dave put together over 10 hours, isn't it, Dave, of saddle fitting? And it's free. And you can watch me fit a 17-hand mule or a 13-hand mule. And you can see all the things that I've gone through. The biggest problem, folks, is most of you that come from a horse world are putting the saddle on like a horse. I was just looking at some folks in Tennessee that sent me a video and said, man, we found one of your saddles used. And, but we're having problems. Well, looking at it, yeah, you're having problems. You've got a square pad. You not don't have a rear cinch. The pad is sitting flush against the back. You only have one. You've got, you got the breaching improperly adjusted uh, to where it's one direct uh, strap to the front cinch. And, and anyway, I just want on and on and on. Folks, if you, it's, it's good thing that he found my saddle used. That is rare to find, and good find, good for you. You'll save some money. But go to, to my website and click on the free saddle fit video. Click on that. Watch the video first. It's inevitable. I'll tell you a little story. I was in Montana, and I'd just taken my tree and put it on several mules there, and we talked about fit. And I took a horse tree, and I put it on. We talked about fit. I talked, I talked, I took a what, what people call a mule tree 
and I put it on there and we talked about fit, you know, and I let them all see it, all three trees. Well, I was sitting down talking, answering questions, and this guy come up and he asked a question. And he says, well, I come here for the saddle fit. And I said, well, you know, we just got done doing it, but I'll tell you what, here's the three trees. You take them and you go have a look and then tell me what you think. And, and he, he said, okay. So, uh, uh, he come back a little bit later, and when he left, I said, folks, what's going to happen is, this is what's going to happen. He's going to come back and say none of them fit. He's, a matter of fact, he's going to say they rock. Oh, okay. So anyway, he, the guy comes back about 20 minutes later, and we're talking away. And so I looked at him, and I said, how'd you do? Did you find a tree that fit? He said, no, none of them fit. And I said, really? So I went over and showed me the same thing that everybody else does. It rocks, you know. It doesn't fit here. It doesn't fit there. It's too loose here. It's too tight there. And I said, okay, you know, the, and, and what we talked about though was he thought the, the bar should fit the back completely all the way across. And I said, well, what about the scapula? And I showed him how the scapula goes up and down. And then I said, how about the area in behind the scapula that moves around a lot and this sort of thing? What happens if I put pressure there? And I put his hand on there and I walked the mule off. I said, do you feel that moving? He says, yes. I said, now pick your hand up a little bit. I said, do you think the mule's more comfortable now? He says, yes, I see it. Here's the thing, folks. We do not want the, the saddle fitting flush against particular places. One, the kidney, one, the spine and the back. That's why you see the back of my saddle sticking up. It sticks up for a reason, and it's open in the back for a reason, so that it, it gives the spine relief. Now, folks, <laughs> you know, I know I went on pretty hot on that and pretty heavy, but here's the deal. I have crippled a lot of mules out of my lack of knowledge. And so that's why I'm sharing this with you. I can show you picture after picture of people who sent me videos or sent me pictures of either their saddle or my saddle, and they didn't watch my video first to see how it was done. They went by what Uncle Tom showed them or what some friend showed them or what they thought they should do. And it's easy to make mistakes, folks. I've been there. So there you are. Uh, will it fit? No problem. First, watch the video. See how to do everything then call me, send me pictures. I'll be happy to help you out. There we go. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, real quick, want to make sure that we welcome everybody else. Uh, we've got uh, Freckles Harley from Minnesota. We've got David watching from Clark, Wyoming. Folks, if you're watching for the first time, hopefully you're noticing. Put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comment section. We want to say hello to you. Diane is watching from Ellabelle, Georgia. We've got Kevin saying, best hat so far. There you go, Steve. we got Kim watching, says, hello, Steve and Dave. Um, Freckles has the question, is it normal for mules to have one or two raised bumps on their spine? Steve, we've talked about this, but we've never gotten the question. Go ahead and answer that there for Freckles. Well, yes, it has the three raised bumps. That is why the back of my saddle is open. That is why the back of my saddle comes up. Because here's what you want to have, folks. Think about this. If I have one saddle made, and I've talked to two people today that's had custom saddles made and they're having problems. And, and there's one thing you've got to think about is that, yes, we have some differences, but the bone structure is still be the same. Those three bumps are exactly why the back of my pad is raised up. Those three bumps are exactly why my saddle is open in the back. And the spine, if you look down through my saddle, you can see how my, my saddle is designed to go around that spine and try to relieve it. On top of that, I've designed pads. So to answer the question along, yes, those three bumps are there. Yes, if you're using a wool pad, you are going to be visiting the veterinarian because you're going to develop a scapula, I mean a, a, a fistula. Do not use wool pads on these, on these meals, folks, especially those with, with uh, elevated spines and especially those with those three bumps. When that goes to rubbing on there, you're going to create a problem. Hey, Dave, I was talking to a guy yesterday. He'd been with meals for over 10 years. Yeah. 
He says, I've been watching your videos. You've answered questions I've had in mind for years. He says, I've taken pads and I put like three pads and I still rub that spot. So I've cut out holes and I still rub that spot. I said, here's the problem, partner. You cut out your pad, but look at the back of your saddle. It's stitched in, isn't it? He says, yes, it is. And I said, that's for a horse. That's rubbing that, 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 spine, that spine and you're going to develop a fistula and you're going to cripple your mule. Yep, there you go. Uh, matter of fact, we uh, we were out in Mesa uh, about three months ago oh. or so, and mm-hmm. we we had about uh, three or four cowboys there, and we were doing a little bit of training. We got some of those videos we put up on YouTube. So if you have not checked out uh, Steve's YouTube channel, if you're on YouTube right now, make sure you go check out those uh, videos. If you have not checked out YouTube and you're watching on Facebook, go over there. There's a lot of good stuff. Uh, we uploaded some of those videos, but there was a section there where um, one of the one of the guys says, "Hey, check this out!" And it was one of your saddles, Steve, and uh, it was uh, it was a well loved saddle. And Steve said, yeah. "But but, but when Pete, Steve first saw it, he goes, hey, I don't I don't know if that's one of my saddles.'" And it's not because he saw it from the side or the front or the other side. It's because he saw it from the back. And what did we see on the back of that saddle, Steve, that made you question whether it was yours? Well, what it was, Dave, is my saddles are open in the back. Just like my hands are right now, that's how the back of my saddles look, They're open. So it does not rub the spine. Somebody had taken leather and stitched it across in there. And guess what? His mule had the elevated spine and had the three spines showing up right at the camel. Yes. And it was swearing it, wasn't it? Yep. We got videos of that, huh? Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's up on... Yeah, it's up on YouTube, and um, man, yep. we had to get, um, not only did we have to get uh, clippers, nippers to get in there and cut that off, but he was going to have to go in and reconfigure the entire saddle, and actually, that's one of the things when folks are looking to buy one of your saddles uh, used, what we tell them is send oh, pictures to pictures. Steve to make sure that it hasn't been modified, because just because it, it's a Steve Edwards uh, saddle and it has the Steve Edwards bars. Sometimes folks, uh, they'll, they'll wind up putting, um, billets on it. They'll wind up sewing it up in the back. They'll wind up making modifications and, uh, and it, and it goes from being something that's well designed specifically for the mule or the donkey into something that looks like and works like just everything else there. So if you find a used saddle, make sure you send pictures, uh, send pictures to Steve. Um, let's hop back over on. Uh, let's hop back over on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we got Derek watching. Derek says, "Love the hat." So we got another uh, another hat fan there, right? That's what we're commenting about is the hat. Uh, Kim says, "Steve, why would I start out with the come along rope instead of a rope halter?" Now I've actually asked you this question before, Steve. I think about seven or eight months ago, as I've been accumulating information, I think I asked you this question. Um, go ahead and answer it for Kim. Why the come along before the rope? Okay. The number one thing we have to think about is the mule is looking for comfort. We as the herd leader are going to develop a comfortable, uncomfortable situation. Now, what the come along rope, it's number one thing that we have to think about Now, listen to this, is relief. They're looking for you to let go with them. The thing with the halter, if adjusted, you'll have continual pressure with the knots on the nose and underneath the chin behind the pole. With the come-along hitch, when you're bumping and they do correct, you let go, it immediately relaxes the nose underneath the chin and behind the pole, immediately. That tells the mule, that tells the donkey, that's what, that's correct. That's what I need to do. You see, they are looking for the data boy. They are looking for the correct. That is what I want. How do you get that? Relief where they can relax with the continual pressure of the halter. They can get relaxation because you quit using the bumper, the bumping. But it's not as relaxing as that rope halter. Now, that's the, uh, the come-along hitch. Now, that, that's, that's the number one thing, is you can quickly give them relief as soon as you let go of that, of that lead rope. Second part is that you communicate immediately. 
Immediately, as soon as you touch that rope, you're going to communicate to the nose, underneath the chin, and the pole, all three at one time. All three at one time. Boom. You have to have crisp, clean communication in the very beginning. It's imperative so that they understand that I'm going to be comfortable when I'm doing it correctly. I'm going to be uncomfortable when I'm doing it incorrectly. And that way they know, you see. So not only that, is it gives you more leverage. The downside is folks will have lead ropes. And I'm going to tell you the majority of folks do not have a correct lead rope on their halters. They don't have them, you know. Uh, and, and I can go into a whole, I can go into a weekend just talking about when to use what type of ropes at what time and when, you know. Just a, just one clinic over a weekend of, of ropes. Now, let's go on. When it comes down to the come along hitch, it will build a foundation. It will give you crisper, cleaner communication over a six month time frame. Folks, anytime you are building a foundation or fixing a problem, it has to be over a six month time frame, not just use it a couple times. So when I go into the corral to get fluffy, I put on the come along hitch and I go out. When I go into the trailer to get fluffy, I put the come along hitch and I bring it out. When I take fluffy and I'm, I'm in a camp and I'm tying it up someplace. In other words, every time I go someplace with fluffy, the come along hitch is there. Now, training time, actual training time where you're training. It's four to six hours a week. That's all. But when I'm doing, when I'm touching Fluffy, every time I take Fluffy out to teach him ground manners, to teach him to be straight, to teach him to go to the right or left, to teach him to back up, the come along hitch is on there. Now, in three months, I can add the rope halter. The come along hitch is underneath the rope halter and the rope halter is adjusted correctly, two fingers above the nostril. Now, that means that the come along hitch has to be approximately three fingers above the nostril in order to communicate. You don't have to be as crisp and clean. And then I'll use a combination of come along hitch, rope halter, come along hitch, rope halter, and go from there. Don't just think one day, uh, just because it's been four and a half months and Fluffy's doing good, that you don't not don't want to use that come along hitch. Use the come along hitch. It's going to make all the difference in the world because it can be that day that you need to you need to crisp and clean that communication right now because that come along hitch will give it to you. The rope halter won't. So there is there's a lot to it, but use that come along rope. Awesome. Very good. Yep. That's a question, like I said, that I've asked before, and uh, really glad that you asked that question for us, Kim. That's great. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, Kathleen is watching, says, Howdy, boys. Partly cloudy and 72 degrees north of Syracuse in New York. Abner was favoring his front leg a few weeks ago, and our farrier found that the sandy soil in the enclosure was causing the hoof wall to separate. He trimmed and recommended that we pack the area with cotton balls and thrush buster daily for the next four weeks. Your thoughts on preventing this in the future and any other advice? Steve, what would you say? Shoes. Folks, listen. <laughs> Gravel is really easy with sand or whatever. What happens is that sand, all right, picture the hoof like this. Can you see that? This is the outside wall. This is the lamina, and this is the coffin bone right here. All right? Now, that gravel gets up between the outside wall and the lamina right here and grows up in through and then starts separating. Now, what else caused the separation? Moisture. Moisture. So if you got a place where your mule is urinating a lot and it's still the same place, put an old car tire over that area so that he'll move and, and urinate someplace else because it's not only the sand, it's also the bacteria as well that can create that problem. Now, here's the other thing, folks. When you start getting 
uh, separation of the lamina and separation from the wall. That means you need to put shoes on with pads. And then I have a particular concoction that I use of, of pine tar and linseed oil that I put in there. And then I put the pad, I put, here's the shoe, I put the pad on in the shoe, and then I caulk the back end of it. And that way, that that material will help um, medicate that and help fix it. Okay, now, in my corrals, I use quarter minus granite. Quarter minus granite. And, and it does a good job of, of packing down, makes it easy to clean corrals. My corrals are 10 foot wide, 20 foot long. And so with that granite in there, that quarter minus granite, it packs it down, makes it hard, but yet it gives them enough surface that they can walk on. But as soon as you start getting a separation of lamina, folks, you better start shoeing that mule. You better start keeping it shod and put a pad on it so that you don't end up crippling it. It's going to be really easy to get cracks and stuff like that, especially in, in, in country where there's a lot of moisture. You're going to have expansion and contraction, and that's the best time to keep, keep shoes on. To keep the shoes, folks, are not just for riding. They're also to keep your mule stable because you got to remember, you know, they've got the same foot as a horse, only smaller. They got a smaller foot, so now what do they have to carry? A horse body on them. So they have a donkey foot that has got a horse body that's got all that weight because most of our mules are fat anyway, you know, including most of us owners, right? Yeah. And yeah. So going on, um, shoes are very, 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 very important when it comes down to fixing lamination problems like that. There you go. Very good. Um, all right, here, we've got more questions uh, and more folks watching. Jason is watching from Texas. Good to have you here, Jason. Kay is yeah. watching from Texas as well. Nice and cool. Uh, Richard Matthews. Good morning, Chaplain Steve. That's the captain right there watching and hanging out with us. Dora, uh, Doris is watching from Techahopi, California. Temp highs in the 70s, smoke in the air from the Southern California fires. Yeah, Doris, uh, stay safe. And I uh, um, hope that uh, you and all of your loved ones are safe as well. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, LaDonna, who is... Uh, now, LaDonna, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you have been watching the last several weeks. You're pretty new to our community, but maybe you've been watching longer and this is just the first we've heard of you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and joining up with what we're doing. It's so good to see you here week after week. We're so grateful to have you. She says... She asked a question, Steve, how can you control a driving donkey that's trying to pull away and not stop, taking the bit in his mouth and then takes all of your strength to hold them from taking off with you? Uh, I'm using a mullen, and is that like a mullen bit? Can you go ahead and help me there, Steve? Yeah, take that mullen bit and hang it on the wall, because all it's going to do, as you've already found out, is make your meal stiff. Look, folks, it's too smooth. So... That mule doesn't care about his mouth. He can get a hold of that bit. That donkey can get a hold of that bit and pull on it, and it got you. They got you. So what would I use? Double twisted wire, full cheek bit. I've got it there on my website. You can see what it looks like. I developed this bit. It's not like anybody else's, folks. I want you to think about this. My equipment is nothing like everybody else's. It's designed for the donkey and the mule. Okay, so now what I would do is I would have it in my hands, and then when my mule uh, uh, started pulling on my hands, most folks pull more. Don't do that. Go right, left, right, left, right, left. Right brain, listen to me. Left brain, listen to me. And increase the intensity if you have to. Right, left, right, left. I'd almost stand up in that thing and just put all the weight I could into it to make sure that this mule, this donkey, doesn't pull on me. Oh, but Steve is starting to bleed on the corner, bleed on the corner of his mouth. Good, good. That means he's darn sure going to start listening. What's better, you bleeding when he hits the side of somebody's car or him bleeding with a couple little places that'll grow back? Not a big deal. Not a big deal. The full cheek double twisted wire snaffle bit is going to give you the stopping and training power. Now, I do not use a mullet mouth because I don't like the port in it. I don't believe the mule gets enough relief from the tongue. 
So what I do use is I is is I you'll see it on my on my uh, website there uh, is a bit that is adjustable in several different ways. You can turn it around and have it one side be serrated, or you can turn it around and have it be smooth. So it depends on the training process. You can take and put it. You can take go directly into the rings like a snaffle, or you can go right down the side and use uh, your reins in in uh, and give give you a little bit of leverage. Plus, you can put a curb chain on it as well. You know, and the idea there that's the finish bit, but you can also use it for various stages of driving as well. And so. I would strongly suggest looking uh, at the at the double twisted wire full cheek bit to start with, and remember, folks, never pull on your donkey, never ever pull on your mule. Always go right, left, right, left. If you're in the saddle, right, left, right, left. If you have a lead rope and you're using a come along rich rope, what do you do? Bump, bump, bump. That immediately communicates to both sides of the of the brain, it immediately communicates to the pole, bump, bump, bump. So that's what you want to do. Same thing with your with your bridle. If you're riding or if you're driving, right, left, right, left. And folks, if you're using a smooth snaffle bit in your, on your mule, you're going to have a wreck. And it's, that mule is going to take that bit and take you anywhere it wants to take you. There you go. Awesome. Uh, let's get, I put, uh, I put a link in the comment section and actually that, that reminds me, Steve, I want to let folks know, I want to take a short break here. Your two newest videos are now available for purchase on yeah. muleranch.com. We've got two brand new videos and these videos, we actually, um, we actually took them from a webinar. So rather than just going with the, making these videos and, um, and putting them up for sale right away, we chose to do a free webinar so anybody could sign up and they could watch the videos for free and uh, and as soon as we finished those out we went ahead and then we released them uh, for purchase but we're doing something really special right now uh, and this goes until uh, I believe it's Friday at midnight and it is buy one get one free so the two new videos are happiness owning a mule and happiness owning a donkey they are two separate yeah. videos and it's 10 things you need to know about mules and then about donkeys in order to have a happy relationship and have happiness on the trails, happiness in the saddle, etc., etc. If you buy one, you get the second one free. So both of them are available right now for $27. As soon as this sale, this launch sale is over, they'll be $27 each. So makes sense. If you want to get them, get them now because you buy one, you get one free. So I just want to let folks know uh, before we get done with today's broadcast, we still got plenty of time, but I was thinking about it and I wanted to make sure that we put it out there. When I said I, I put in the comment section a link to your driving bit, it made me think, oh gosh, I got to make sure we tell folks about uh, happiness owning a mule, happiness owning a donkey. And there are folks watching today who were on those webinars. Um, they'll tell you in the comment section uh, how great and how packed full of information each of those uh, each of those training sessions was and uh, and the videos are just they're they're great. We went back, we edited them, so it's not just Steve talking the whole time. We've intertwined live training uh, with each section. So as Steve talks about something, uh, many of the sections have live video that we shot on the ranch um, and different locations inside there, so you can see what he's talking about and you can hear what he's talking about. So. Just want to let you know there. I'll put a couple more links before we're done uh, so y'all can go access that. James is watching from Holden, Missouri. We've got Lynn watching from Lakewood, Colorado for perfect temperature and sun. Love hearing that. Uh, Tracy is watching, and she's got a question. Very simple. Um, she says, do you use the come along on foals? So what is a foal, Steve? What's the difference between maybe like a foal and a colt? Um, and then do you use a come-along rope on them? Yes, I do use the come-along on a foal. A foal is under six months. Usually in a six-month time frame, I wean my foals. And, and I castrate them, and I pull wolf teeth, and all during that, after that six-month time frame. Yes, I do use it. Matter of fact, if I can get a baby when it's still in the sack and I help take the sack off, and, and and help it with its first time standing up. I actually take baling twine and I make a come along on it 
and I and I set it all up, and I just bring their nose to the left, and I bring their nose to the right, I tip their head down, and I bring their head up, and that's about all I do. I don't do move feet or anything, but I get my little, my brand new young mule that's just a few seconds old, I get it to start feeling that come along hitch right off of that, and of course, then I take it off and try to get mama to have some colostrum, you know, yeah. but yes, and then, and then on my foals, absolutely, uh, I was just, uh, Oh, what was his name in Michigan? Uh, he was just talking to me about this. Uh, what do I do with my come along? All of a sudden, my my meal, my young foal, which I think is like five months old, is starting to uh, uh, kick at me and, and this sort of thing. And I said, all right, time to be the herd leader. Put the come along hitch on and be serious. Yep, there you go. All throughout uh, the YouTube videos and all throughout the videos that you can uh, purchase on Steve's website, um, you're going to find that the come along rope is something that we come back to for trainers of all experience yep. levels and for mules and donkeys of all ages and experience levels as well. Um, and it's, it's something that you never graduate from. You never graduate from ground um, foundation training. It's something that you always come back to. You've got a problem, come along rope. You want to yep. teach something new, come along rope. You need to make a quick correction come along rope. You need to get their attention, work on your timing, come along rope over and over and over again. Um, so great question. I love having that question. It gives us an opportunity to come back and talk about ground foundation training. And like I said, you yep. never graduate from it. Um, uh, let's go on here. LaDonna is watching. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Kathleen. Uh, oh, Yolanda. Hey, we've gone international again. Let's get our little chime there. She says, Houston, we have a problem in Europe. First, it's raining. Second, the wind is picking up. And third, the temperature is dropping. Fourth, my saddle does not fit on the Western saddle trolley for regular Western saddles. Now what? I don't know what any of that means, Steve. What is a Western saddle trolley for regular Western saddles? Do you uh, know? The only thing I can think of it would be her saddle stand. Oh. Uh, that they use, they put the saddle on it, and then they got wheels on it, and they can move it around. Uh, but but uh, you know, Yolanda, when we come to the Netherlands to see you, and you cook us that nice bread and stuff, that's right. We'll be happy to see your trolley. There we go. We'll take a good look at it. Uh, okay, keep going here. Becky is watching. Becky from Mount Vernon, Washington. I just purchased a great saddle from you. And love it. We love hearing that, Becky. Thank you so much for saying that. And, you know, uh, we know that folks out there are are uh, enjoying the tack, enjoying the equipment. We know that folks out there are watching the YouTube videos and going out and in the corral and in the pen and um, on the trail and getting results. We know all that. And so whether or not folks say something, we just keep showing up because we know that it's happening. But it sure is nice to hear it. Uh, directly from y'all. So, Becky, thank you for sharing that. Really appreciate that. Uh, hey, Stephen, David, beautiful 59 degrees here in Kentucky. That's from Paul. We've got Caleb watching, asking the question. I have a 10-year-old John Mule that will not stop for you in the round pin. No matter how hard he works, he will not stop when you ask him to. What could I do to fix that? Make him keep on going. Because, you see, he thinks that that uh, I'm just going to keep going no matter what. You know, listen, if he drops down dead, I think he'll finally have it. But he won't. They're smart enough that they won't do that. When he can, when he's going, don't get behind him going, go, go, go. Just follow him around being quiet. Sit in the middle, stand there, and just watch him go around. There you go. Watch him go around and wait. And watch him. When you see his head drop in one spot, did you know right there he's thinking about listening to you? But otherwise, what you have right now is called flight and fright. He thinks if I keep going, I don't have to deal with you in the middle. One of the biggest problems that people have when they're in a round pen is they're treating them like a horse. They expect the mule to come to them. That's going to be rare to do, folks. I don't want the mule to come to me. I want to go to the mule. That's a lot more difficult than the mule coming to me. The mule does it on his own time, but when I come to him, that's that's on my time. So let's go back. Watch the mule go around. As you watch him go around, you watch him go around, watch him all of a sudden he'll drop his head in one little spot. Think about that spot. 
And when he comes around and he drops his head, step back away. Give him a big step back. And you just took the pressure off him. That little bit is going to eventually give you a stop. But you have to do that. Now, when he starts to slow down and he says, okay, I'm going to start slowing down now. No, you make him keep on going that speed. Say, no, you chose to go that speed, Fluffy. So you're going to go until I say, the herd leader says, okay, now you can start going at a slower speed. In other words, Fluffy is saying, I'm going to have it my way, but we don't always catch those little things that's coming on. Again, if he slows up, make him go up. You're the one to slow him up. You're the one to go from the shoulder to the nose and ask him. And when you do that, don't step toward him. Always move your shoulders toward him. And, and if that don't move, then slap your leg and make him go. He'll eventually get it, okay? He'll eventually, his lungs is going to tell his heart, hey, uh, Houston, we got a problem like we just heard yeah. uh, uh, Yolanda say, you know. Uh, yeah, we got a problem here, you know. So uh, the heart will start telling the lungs to slow up, and they will do it. In the meantime, folks, don't push them. Just stand in the middle, nice and quiet, watch them go around. Watch for that small try, and you'd be surprised what that mule will show you, especially on the right-hand side. When he's going clockwise, he'll show you quicker on the right-hand side. Why is that? Because the less things get done on the right-hand side, everybody starts from the left-hand side, the mule is now comfortable. So now it's the right-hand side. When he's going around and around, pin, go from there. Now, my next thing is, why are you using a round pin? Because he's hard to catch. I, I like to know that. There we go. All right. So if you're uh, if you're still watching there, Caleb, love to hear that. Myra's watching. Myra was having some problems over on Facebook, and so she switched over to YouTube. She says, uh, "Greetings from Ojai, California. We've got Kiki. Hey guys, Kiki here. Sorry I'm late. Cloudy in seventies and still rather smoky here in Southern Oregon. Stay safe there, Kiki." Uh, Kim says, thank you for the detailed explanation, Steve. Uh, Sharon and Steve are watching from Fair Play, Kentucky. Good to have you guys here. Wayne is watching, watching, says, I'm running late, but I'm on from Alabama stormy tonight. Send those storms out here to Arizona. We'll take them. Uh, Wayne oh, yeah. says, love the hat, Steve. So we've got about 10, 10 or so votes for the hat there saying, we yes, thumbs votes. up. Yeah, we need, we need more thumbs up, folks. I, I need to know. We need yeah. more thumbs up on the hat there. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. And should I also be using the face Should you? Yeah. Do you guys think Steve should be masking up? What do you guys say there? Should Steve be masking up? We've got uh, Filmer of Bobcats on YouTube says, which is usually um, harder in terms of vet visits, donkeys or mules? Is one or the other have a better temp temperament or worse temperament for vet visits? No, it just really depends, you know. Um, I, I've seen vets do be really good and come in nice and slow and everything good, but they also smell funny evidently because some mules and some donkeys just have a hard time. Uh, and, and, but they'll get over it. That's where the come along hitch comes in. It keeps the flight and fright to a minimum, you know? So vet work, shoers, somebody different, it can all create some, some, difficulties so here's the thing something for folks to to hear about if if you haven't heard it put this way um the uh the come along rope well well i'll say i'll say it this way early on when we were doing these broadcasts we got a lot of questions about desensitizing steve how do i desensitize so that we can go across a bridge steve how do i desensitize so we can ride uh, uh, you know along the roadside how do i desensitize and what you would hear steve say is we don't do desensitization desensitization because you cannot desensitize if you don't have a bear you cannot desensitize if you don't have a coyote or a bobcat or a rattlesnake you can't desensitize if you don't have a you know a uh, a uh, uh, 18 wheeler, right? You, you can't desensitize with those things if you don't have them. So it really come back to ground foundation training and teaching yeah. them to respect the halter. And so that's where yeah. the come along rope and the rope halter come into play. It's, uh, it's because they've, 
they've learned how to respect the halter. It doesn't matter if it, if it's the farrier. It doesn't matter if it's the vet. It doesn't matter if it's an 18 wheeler coming down a tr uh, 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 right next to a trail where 18 wheelers never come down. Uh, they learn to respect the halter. And if well you can said. control them on the ground, you have a greater chance of controlling them in the saddle. So when, when he asked that question and you said, come along rope you, immediately, Steve, it made me think, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is respect for the halter, regardless of what the scenario is that they find themselves. Did I explain that correct? Yeah, well said. Very well said. And the halter and the come along hitch, the halter and then the bridle, they will all go in succession. Without good ground foundation, folks, you cannot overdo ground foundation. Okay. Uh, what I mean by that is I don't want you to do 15 times go around in a circle, not that. But just some basic communication skills so that they, they stay tuned is really, really important. Once you've done your three, six, nine, 12 steps, then you can pretty much lock and load, go any way you want to go. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Anytime you have something new, the come along hitch will get them to understand that. Uh, I didn't have uh, 10,000 people. Uh, when I was training my mules for the world championships, that was the big problem. I mean, I had the banners, I had the loud music, but I didn't have 10,000 people. So how can you desensitize? You can't. Okay. Now, let me give you another thing, Dave. You know, at the Phoenix Zoo, you've been there. Yeah. Uh, you've seen what we've done there. Yeah. Uh, I've got mules uh, that I and horses as well that I have taken through the Phoenix Zoo. Now, you talk about smells and you have giraffes or you have lions balling and this sort of thing, yeah, you you, you folks want to see come along work, it works really good when you got that kind of situation. Yep, that's awesome. We'll keep trucking along here. Y'all keep getting the come along rope and uh, making some ground foundation training. Okay, we've got Linda. Sorry to be late. Farrier just finished. Linda the mule servant and Theo the sweet one-eyed mule with a pedicure now. Cool and breezy oh. in rural central Ohio. Jay is watching from Utah. Um, LaDonna, so I was talking earlier, she says, I'm new a few weeks. I thought so. So really glad to have you here, LaDonna. Thank you so much. And yeah. I know there's plenty of y'all who are out there watching who, um, maybe haven't commented yet or said hello. I just want to say hello to you. We are so glad that you're here. Glad that you're hanging out with us. And LaDonna had told a couple other gals about this show. And so they've been watching it and they've been calling me. There we go. There you are. That's how the word spreads. That's how we let... The equine community know just who the top of the pecking order should be, that mule and donkey there. Uh, Nadine is watching from New Hampshire, but my mule and I are currently in New York at a clinic for the next four days. Have fun. Uh, Wayne says, I'm having trouble with my breeching on the quarter straps and down uh, up and down wearing uh, hair off. I'm, I'm guessing it's the breaching on the mule. Uh, hopefully, you're not wearing your own breaching there, Wayne. Um, I move them about every hour. I even try to replace them with nylon straps, still doing it. Any advice? Uh, I ride rough mountains. P.S. They are not your breachings. Thanks. So that's a good piece to know whether or not he's using yours. So he's using a different brand. Uh, but still, Steve, uh, wearing hair off, moving them up and down, running, uh, riding rough terrain. Yeah, well, it ain't much. Uh, you talk about rough terrain. Just look out here. You know that's rough. Now, <clears throat> send me some pictures. The biggest problem, folks, is you're using a breaching to hold the saddle back. That's not the purpose of a breaching. The purpose of the breaching is to to stabilize the the saddle. The purpose of the breaching is to keep the saddle from going right and left and some forward. It is not to hold the saddle back all the time. The number one thing that holds the saddle back is, da 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 da, ring the bells, the rear cinch. The rear cinch has to be the center point that's going to balance, that's going to keep the saddle from going around a lot. The breaching is just balance only. Now, send me some pictures. It's not my breaching, that's okay. You know, I'm here to help the mule folks. And if I can do that, I'll help you out, you know. Uh, so send me the pictures. Now, it's also, you might want to think about how that breaching is made. The majority of breachings do are not balanced. So when you hold the spider, 
you hold what's what's called the hip safe across the top and you hold it in place your uh your breaching should automatically be at an angle should be setting just like that at an angle that's the way it should be most breachings are not folks just because it looks like a breaching don't mean it's going to work correctly so send me some pictures uh hey steve i just heard just talked with you uh on on the clinic and and here it is so send me the pictures top of the ears bottom of the feet tip of the nose tip of the tail let me see the whole thing don't just show me pictures of the breaching so let me see the whole thing and then i'll help you out that's great uh okay keep on moving here jan is watching from chino valley um okay we're talking about britching so we'll talk about this now would you please talk about why a britching is preferable to a crouper thank you and while you're while you're answering this one steve Folks won't see me step away. You'll see me step away. I'm coming right back. I'm getting something. All right? All right. Breaching over a crouper. Breaching over a crouper. Number one, a crouper was never designed for more than six to eight pounds. A crouper was designed to be on harness to keep the breaching from climbing up the hip when driving in a wagon. Now, that crouper, because you see, a breaching sets different in harness than it does in saddle. When you have a saddle, the hip plate sets between the dock of the tail, point of the croup. That's where the hip plate sets. In harness, the hip plate sets in front of the point of the croup. So therefore, to keep the breaching from climbing up the hip, you put a tail crouper on. That keeps the breaching back and hanging correctly. Now, that's the number one part. Now, when it comes down to the crouper, the crouper is attached to the tail. The tail is a bone, and it attaches right down to the spine, all the way through. So when the saddle and your weight is pulling and going down a hill, you've got 200 pounds, and I don't know what you weigh, ma'am. Maybe I'd better say 100 pounds, but 200 pounds is pulling on that tail. Guess what happens? The tail starts getting some soreness, and then we feel bad for the meal, so we loosen it up. Now that crouper comes up, gets a hold of the tail, breaks it off, and the sad story is, three a couple years ago, I had three different people had called me and said, tell people not to use a breaching. They had to put their mules down because they broke the tail because they broke their back. Get that, All right now, the breaching. The breaching is to be adjusted. It is not to stay in the same place. Yeah, look at there, huh? Yeah, perfect. Hey, Dave's going to be happy from Australia he now. He is. All right. All right, now look, here it is. You're getting ready to go down a steep hill. You're going to lower your breaching. There we go. You're going to lower the breaching so that the mule has to sit on the breaching to help hold the saddle back. All right? Lower the breaching. Now, I'm just going on little heels. Smooth and easy. I'm going to elevate the breaching so that it will keep help maintain and balance the saddle going on that. You cannot do with a crouper. A crouper, you can only keep it in one place, and when you make it looser, you end up creating problems. So, tail crouper, don't use a tail crouper. If you love your mule and you want to keep them safe, take that tail crouper and, and put it on your harness. Use a breaching, it'll, it'll help balance your saddle. Now, here's the next thing. Use that rear cinch. The rear cinch is the most important part of keeping that saddle into place. Awesome. I put a link again to the uh, mule saddle training course. Steve talks more about this, uh, talks more about how all of the pieces work together. So go get that. It's free. Um, there's no strings attached. There's no, Hey, buy this. Uh, what a, it's just, it's free. It's information and it's good. We want you to go through that. Um, we want you to go through all of it. I think y'all really enjoy it if you have not yet. Uh, let's see here. William is watching from Lena, Wisconsin. Linda says, Steve, I see you run out of the good hats. Wink, wink. So I went out and I grabbed one of these hats right there for Linda. Uh, ben is watching, says, hello, Steve and Dave. Hope all is well. Cloudy here today. Wanted to thank Steve for his advice last week. We were able to, oh man, this is great, Steve. We were able to catch our mule with your advice and are very appreciative for your time. Is there not something that 
something that will make your Wednesday better than hearing that. Oh, That's great. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Terry is watching, says we had a beautiful red sunrise over Lake Michigan this last Tuesday from the smoke of the California fire. So I guess there's a silver lining there. I hope everyone out there is safe. The red long ears are fantastic looking. Thanks. So there we go. We love it. Uh, let's see. Ben is watching from Prince Georgia, British Columbia. That's taking us international again. Uh, Roger is watching in New York. Uh, Linda says, how do I teach side passes with the come-along rope? Is it in the basic equitation video? No. No. I like to do all of my foundation training, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, side passing and everything using the come-along hitch. And Dave, <clears throat> that's probably a pretty good video. I know we've got that on uh, the Why Does My Mule Do That? Uh, video series. I think we got a little bit on that, but here's the thing. When I'm doing my groundwork, one of the things I like to do is teach one to side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters using the come along hitch. So basically, think about this. Your hand on the come along is going to control from the shoulder to the nose. Your hand on the mule's belly is going to control the, the shoulders to move around the right and left is going to teach them to side pass. And then when moving it back, you're going to turn on the, on the forehand. So how to teach them to side pass. First of all, my hand. My hand has to come up like this. I take my come along rope and I come up. You'll see the mule elevate his head. What that's going to do is pick up the left shoulder. And then I use my hand at the same time and I push against the ribs ever so lightly. I ask with my ribs, and the meal should cross a little bit, either the front or the rear legs. The slightest try, quit, stop. When they try it, quit, stop. Now, pick it up again. I pick up on my left hand. I use my right hand against the ribs. They do it a little bit better that time. I stop, I quit. I give them a break. Now I pick up on my hands again. I get a hold of that nose and shoulder, put my hand back on the ribs again. They do it really good. I quit. I'm done that day on my left hand side, my near side, teaching my mule to side pass. And then it goes on from there. So that day, that'd be another deal to add to the come along rope. Not only the basics, but to teach one to side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hind quarters, you know, would be a good deal to do. Yeah, very good. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We've got, uh, Tracy says, thank you, Steve. Jay is watching. Is there a way to stop a mule from wanting to jump across mud? She will go across stream with clear water, but at mud, she will jump it. Okay. So it's going to be your timing, Jay. Just like anything else, folks, it's our timing. If you know the mule is getting ready to jump across the mud, take your hands Put your hands down low and go right, left, right, left, right, left. Increase the intensity if you have to. But when that mule jumps, at the middle of that jump, you hit him pretty hard. Right, left, right, left, right, left, really tough. Okay? But try to do all your work at home first to teach them to get soft, drop their head, and, and prepare. The reason they jump is because you don't have control of them. So just get a hold of your reins using... The, uh, the Mule Riders Martingale is what I always like to use for my training. Never use a finished bit for doing the training, but always, always use a twisted uh, wire snaffle bit. And anyway, set them up, and it'll, that'll work. Awesome. Um, Wayne is watching. We love hearing this, Steve. Love my Mule Riders Martingale. I notice a 100% turnaround. I'm three weeks uh, no more throwing the head up when it's time to stop. So that's what we like to hear awesome. there. Thank you for sharing that, Wayne. There Appreciate it. Kim says, yeah. I love the hat too, Steve. Um, <laughs> Filmer Good. says, no need to mask up if you're outside. You know what? Just take in that beautiful that outdoor air. We love it. David says, good to hear you guys again. David Pingelli, great, great hat, Steve. David, what do you think about my hat too? Steve got me this. <laughs> Both of us are wearing winning hats, right, Steve? Was that was, did I hear you say Felker said don't wear the mask outside? 
Uh, Felker? Fil- filmer of bodcats. No need to mask up if you're outside. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You're exactly right. There we go. Uh, Chris is watching from Mississippi. Lynn says, good hat. Um, Paul says, thumbs up on your cap. Robert says, great hat. Roger says, love the hat. Jan says, thumbs up on the hat. Uh, let's see. Kay is watching. Love the hat. Where can I get one? Skip the mask. Where'd you pick that one up, Steve? Actually went on, uh, Amazon. Yes. And, uh, and I picked the hat up and I also picked up, uh, a few of these. And, uh, so when I, when I go, uh, to the restaurant and wear it for two minutes there or go into wherever I go where they want you to wear a mask, of course you will. You know, I'm happy to oblige. Yeah, happy to oblige. You know what? Actually, on on that hat you're wearing right there, I really like that American flag on the right hand side. I Isn't think that nice? That, I think that's yeah. really really cool. I like that a yeah. lot. But we got them on Amazon. They got the mask and, and hats and all on Amazon. So yeah, I like that. We got- uh, let's see here. Uh, Gary is watching. Love uh, from Boudreaux, Louisiana. Uh, love the cap. Oh no, B- Boudreaux. In Louisiana, love the cap and mask. Ashley is watching uh, in Yellville, Arkansas. Love your live chat. We're glad to do it. Um, Linda is watching. Love the cap. Donna says, love the hat. Danelle is watching. Papo says, aloha from Hawaii. Love the hat and mask up. Thanks for all you do. Jesus is Lord. We're down with that, Danelle. Thank you so much. Uh, Hunzi says, doing research, looking at to get into equine. Welcome, Hunzi. We would love to have you in the yeah. community. Do you recommend donkeys, older horse, or a mule for something to start out? What is your advice? We have young children that are interested as well. So first off, before you answer, Steve, Hunzi, I'm going to tell you, you can find all of the free videos on YouTube. You can find lots of free resources on um, on Steve's website, muleranch.com. Right now, the buy one, get one of happiness owning a mule, happiness owning a donkey you need to check that out. Those two videos, you can get both of them right now. They're 27 bucks for the two of them. Um, Steve is going to give you some additional stuff, but I just want to throw that out there. I want you to get it before it goes up. Steve, what else would you have to say to Hunzi? You hit the nail on the head right there, Dave. Get some education first. Watch all that free stuff. Read the free stuff and this sort of thing. Uh, do all that first. Get yourself, the have yourself the ability to be able to speak mule or donkey, okay? And having that communication skills. Uh, what I tell you what, the donkeys will steal your heart. They're, they're pretty awesome. Now, you can have a sorry donkey, you can have a sorry horse, and you can have a sorry mule. And that's one of the things that we're going to be working on when we go to Prescott, Dave, is to share folks, here's a nice donkey, but there's a lot of butt animals out there, okay? A, a good horse, but a good mule, but okay. So let's take care of the butts, and how we do that is education. That's why I'm here, folks. Uh, that's what I want to do. I want to help you. I want to push you in the right direction. I don't want to tell you, oh, go buy a Fjord horse because they're ABC. I get so sick of hearing that some some particular breed is better than the other. Not. It's disposition, 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 and then your abilities. To communicate. I can't tell you how many mules I've had been given to me over the years because people just didn't know how to communicate with them and they were good mules to start with and they got bad. Well, it wasn't the mules folk fault, folk fault, folk, folk, oh, so, folks. Uh, yeah, there we go. Get them down. Get your education and uh, and then go from there. That's great. Um, yeah, uh, just to reiterate, I put in the comment section a link to where you can get the happiness owning a mule and then also happiness owning a donkey buy one get one free that'll end on friday so if you still want to think about it you can you got a couple days um but uh if you if you know that you want to have that in your collection they're digital so you get to watch them yes. immediately um they that, are digital. that'd be a good good place to start there roy is watching steve and dave just pulled up to the house here in mina arkansas but i've been listening while driving love that you uh, are able to take us with you in the truck that's great. Awesome. Uh, Terry says, Steve, nice hat. Lose the mask. Yeah, I'm about over the masks too. Um, I, I went to I went to Walmart and Target out here in Arizona over the weekend, 
And uh, for the first time in a while, I saw folks walking around without their masks. And I was thinking, I was like, yeah, I feel the same way too. I'm over this mask thing. So uh, I know it's different in other parts of the country, but out here, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Uh, David is watching, says, I was waiting for the hat. David, here you go. I busted it out and I'll be taking this up to Prescott too. So we'll be good. Uh, let's see. Uh, LaDonna says, uh, Bobby Ferraro is one of the, one of the folks who's been watching. Uh, Linda hey, says Bob, now, Dave, you. that's a hat. She likes my hat right there. Uh, there Trent go. says, I like the hat. Jan says, thank you, Steve. I use a britchin, but I've heard people argue that a crouper is fine. My gut always told me that that wasn't right. Listen to that gut. Cause it was correct yeah. there, Jan. Trent says, I like the hat. Uh, Beth says, watching from New Hampshire and loving it. Good to have you here, Beth. Glad to see you. Cowboy Ken says, hello from Connecticut. Cowboy Ken, glad that you're here hanging out with us. Hilda's watching says, mules rule. <laughs> all right. I like that. All right. We'll take that. Uh, and uh, here we go. Last question of the day. We're about 10 minutes over. Last question of the day. Jan says, when are you going to Prescott? When and where? We're going up in about two weeks, uh, not this weekend, but uh, uh, what, like a couple weeks, something like that, and we're going to have some yeah. time up there. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's not open to the public. Yeah. It's just going to be a thing where we're actually going to be helping James out and doing some videos. It's a, it's like James says, we're going to make a video of what not to do. Yeah. And, and I think that maybe we ought to think about naming it that, what not to do, you know. And uh, like James will tell you, I mean, here's a very humble man that's humbled himself up. These animals have done it with him. Uh, he's, a, he's a veteran. Uh, he's a, uh, uh, from Desert Storm. That was a pretty tough deal there yeah. in, in, on the tank. And, uh, and the man is also uh, a paramedic. He's a head nurse up at the VA hospital in, uh, in Prescott. And uh, he knows about that stuff. But you're going to hear him. The mistakes that he's made, folks, uh, fortunately, he's only been to the hospital one time. And so we'd like to keep all of you from that way. So this is coming, this is coming up. I think we ought to think about naming it. Uh, uh, mule training, what not to do. Yeah, mule training, mule and donkey. Mule we're and donkey be training, what not to do. donkeys up there. You know? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. And uh, folks, we are getting closer and closer to confirming our February date. So we will... We are planning on doing uh, clinics in the new year, and so we're getting closer to confirming, hopefully, a February date. Don't hold me to it. We've got to work out a couple more things, but if you're wanting to get out and see Steve Edwards and spend some time uh, with him and learn live, hands-on, um, we're working to make that happen. Um, so, uh, so uh, yeah, just FYI. And then uh, also, folks, um, here in the coming in the coming. Uh, Coming days, coming weeks, we've got this new website uh, that we're going to be launching. Yep. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Steve and Susan are going through it. They're combing through it, making sure that everything that needs to be there is there. Of course, I've got all the information, but I don't have the understanding. So Steve's got the understanding, and he's making sure that, that I did an okay job. He's going to be signing off on the work that I did. So if I did everything right, he'll let me know, and we'll get it out there for you. Steve, anything else right. you want to say before we're all done today? I, I've been I've been trying my best to hold this back, but I got to share it with you. Let's hear it. Eric from Mountain Ridge Gear in Colorado. That's right. He got invited to the White House. That's awesome. <laughs> Donkeys at the White House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're talking. He got invited to go to the White House. He was he was chosen as a American made business. Hear that, folks? You're going to start seeing that on all of my equipment, American made. You're going to start seeing flags on them. Everything that I sell that's coming up is going to start having a flag on it. Anyway, uh, Eric got invited as a, the number one uh, American made business in Colorado. There's going to be businesses from all over the United States going to the White House. He's going to have a table there with information about donkeys and pack equipment. He's going to have my riding saddle there, and it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Got invited to the White House. Donkeys rule, right? How about that? Yeah. How about that? I, he, uh, he had said, you know, wanted to see about getting 
to have donkeys actually on there out on the White House lawn, and they said, oh, maybe not, but he's going to do the best that he can, and we're glad that he'll be there. Yep, it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, well, we'll see you folks. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, folks, be sure, go to muleranch.com. Up at the very top, click the Learn More tab, and you can get uh, Happiness Owning a Mule. And when you buy that, you get Happiness Owning a Donkey for free. Or you can buy Happiness Owning a Donkey, and when you buy that, you get Happiness Owning a Mule for free. What I'm trying to tell you is it's buy one, get one free. That's until Friday, so if you're a little bit like me and you forget here or there, uh, go get it right now. If you want a couple more days to think about it, you've got that. But don't forget, because once it goes up to full price, it's up to full price. Well, right now, it's buy one, get one free. Steve, thank you so much. Steve's got his yeah. mask. Steve's got his hat. Steve's got America right there. Folks, thank you for hanging out. We will see you next week. Take care, everybody. Pray for America. Pray for, Pray America. for America. That's right. We'll see y'all. Bye-bye.